Hey everybody. Uh, we're living at Ford uh, GTW head right now. And it had a big low center right here. It was very dish. Still got a little bit to go right here. Right in the general area, right in the center, right where that red mark is, is a very low spot. So we're taking a bunch off this side, a bunch off that side, getting it perfectly flat right now. Uh, after you do a bunch of these pegs, uh, it seems like 11,000 is usually what it takes to get the, the bow out of them. And it looks like this one's right on target for 11,000. And I think it's going to clean up here at 9. And then I might give it a light finish coat on uh, coming right at 10 or 11,000 uh, that I milled off here. But it's still going to be a very good head. It's going to be perfectly flat. I'll show you that when it comes off the mill. And um, if anybody is interested in using W heads, uh, one left. Send me a comment below, and uh, I can get it right out to you. Okay, we've got some more engine stuff coming up today. Uh, I want to get this milled and uh, bagged up and uh, oiled so it doesn't rust, and uh, I'm ready to get shipped up. So, uh, one CPW head left. Anybody need one? Uh, send me a comment below. Okay, guys, the Ford GPW head is done. Oiled, it's bagged, it's labeled, ready to be shipped. And like I said, last one, so if you need one, uh, I don't have any others coming in anytime soon, so uh, good chance to get one if you need one for your project. Okay, we are going to hone a block next. I know I'm kind of out of sequence because uh, I didn't show you guys the boring yet, but uh, got Gary here today, and I'm just getting ready. I'm putting on our torque plate and I'm going to torque that down and um, we're going to get this honed and uh, don't worry I've got another block to bore uh, and like I said I know I'm out of sequence because usually uh, I should have showed boring at first but I didn't get any footage of that but uh, see the cylinders in there they're bored put a nice chamfer on there and I'll show you that on the next block when I do it um, but for right now uh, this block is ahead of the other one, so I'm going to uh, torque that down and uh, show you the honing process. Okay, hang in there. I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, I'm torquing the, um, the deck plate down, and I've got this plate numbered. I think you can see the numbers. Uh, this is the number one. You gotta go in sequence when you're putting your head on or even this torque plate so that we stress the block just like it will be with the cylinder head on. Brian, those those numbers correspond to the the, uh, the torque sequence. Yeah, it's in every shop manual. Yeah. You'll see the sequence. But I just marked it on here so you can see the general direction to torque your head. Okay, now that torque plate is duplicating the stress in the block that the cylinder head will put on it. We'll hone it with that stress on there so when the cylinder head goes on, our cylinder heads will be perfect. Now these are getting, this block's getting 60 over pistons and I left about four thousandths for the honing process and I'll talk more about piston to wall clearance and stuff when I <clears throat> when I bore the next block but right now uh, we're going to get to our final true size with the honing stones. So let me get set up with that and I'll be right back with you. Okay guys, uh, we're just uh, oiling up the hone, getting ready to go. We're using this uh, 
adjustable hone here. It's got two stones, two wipers. And Gary is going to squirt oil as I go. And uh, there's a lot, of, a lot of feelings about honing. Some guys say you can't hone without a proper honing machine. Uh, those are usually the guys that have the machine. And uh, some guys say you could do a fine job like this, which I know you can because I've done it before. And um, it just depends what you're building. If you're building a thousand horsepower engine, you probably want to do it on a honing machine. Uh, we can get very, very accurate results down to the half thousands uh, with this hand operated unit and a drill. So, uh, for these old Willys motors, uh, I think this is the way to go. And uh, Gary's going to uh, get the oil in his hands, and we're going to just start making a pass. We're doing an <clears throat> 80 grit cut first, then we're going to do a 150, and then we're going to finish this out probably around uh, 220 or so, so that the ring seat real nice in there and everything goes good. But for now, we're going to rough everything in, get rid of most of the material with the 80 grit. Okay, we're going to go a little bit at a time, and I'm going to get the bore gauge and keep checking this so we don't go too big with the 80 grit. So I will check it right now, see where we're at, and then we'll just continue on. We'll do this hole. It's nice and cool in there with the oil. And then we'll do the front hole, and then we'll come back to this one. And then we'll do that, and we'll stagger them so we don't build any heat. But we're going slow enough, and i got plenty of oil in there, so it shouldn't be a problem. But uh, I'll measure that, we'll do the rest of them, and then I'll come back with you when we're changing the stones. Okay guys, I just changed my stones. Uh, I am at 180 now. And then we're going to take it to 250. Uh, right now the bore is 3 inch 183. And I'm going to take it to 3 inch 185 and a half to 185 and 3 quarters. Uh, and again, I'll, I'll explain more about piston to wall clearance and, and how I like to set them. Uh, but right now, we're two thousandths away from where we want to be. And the next thing we need to think about is the surface we leave so our rings will seat properly. You don't want it too rough, uh, but too smooth is even worse. They'll never seat. So uh, I use, I don't use straight cast iron rings. I use the chrome plated rings. Uh, but cast iron and chrome plated rings, uh, like anywhere from uh, 220 to 280, in that range and you want to leave a 45 degree cross hatch with your home so we're going to do that in the two thousands that we have left uh, we're going to take it uh, another thousands with the 180 and then we'll switch to our final uh, 250 or so I think it's a 250 stone so I'm going to chuck this up in the drill and Gary's going to continue on oiling it and we'll make it happen Okay guys, we're going to take our last final uh, three quarters of a thousandth off this cylinder. Now this is our 250 grit stone set and what you want to be careful of on this one is to move it up and down fast enough to get your 45 degree cross hatch on here. Uh, too slow and the angle's not right and too fast it's too steep. So keep an eye on how fast the drill's going and, uh, and you'll get the feel of uh, how quickly you need to move it up and down to get the right cross hatch and that's very important on the cylinder walls so here we go okay we're going to expand it just a little bit and we're headed again Okay, I'm going to check the measurement, and we'll do that same thing to all the cylinders, and I'll be back with you when we have it finished up. 
Okay guys, we're going to let the oil drain out of that block a little bit and talk a little bit about uh, piston wall clearance. Uh, I got these sealed power 60 over pistons and you can't see it on the on the thing but um, they tell you where to measure your piston how far down from the skirt to measure it and they give you the size and they're very accurate on the size and they give you uh, minimum clearance on there so these particular pistons are 3 inch uh, 183 um, they take it way out they go uh, 18325 uh, plus or minus uh, 0 0.00025 inches. Uh, I measured them uh, with a micrometer that went to the tenths. They're uh, 38132. Uh, oh, 38132. Um, and they say they want one and a half thousandths clearance uh, at the skirt. Um, that's a little snug. That's the minimum clearance that they want. That's a little snug. So. See if I can work this out for you. Your minimum, your stock bore is 3, 1, 25. That's 3 and an eighth. So if we were putting a 60 over piston in there, theoretically, we should be able to get away with 3, 185. And that's not too bad. Um, <clears throat> in the service manual, they show. Uh, piston fitting with a 3,000 feeler gauge. Uh, they like 3,000 feeler gauge with five pounds of pull. Um, I like to just, uh, I don't fit pistons like that. I like to take uh, the piston size and add two and a half to two and three quarter thousandths to the size. Um, so what, I sh what I'm shooting for here is uh, 3.185 to 3.185 and a half uh, and that's how I like to that's how I like to fit my pistons uh, this is the number we're shooting for on our honing and um, you can go plus or minus a half you could take it to 3186 and it's not going to hurt you at all uh, up to 386 3186 and three quarters and you'll be fine right there uh, anywhere between one eight <clears throat> five five and one eight six seven five um, and if you have any questions on piston wall clearance just let me know uh, it, it could get a little confusing um, if you go uh, a regular standard way of doing it is uh, one thousand of clearance per inch of bore and this is three and an eighth so it would be uh, 3 thousandths clearance. So you'd be right in between uh, where I like to go there. So uh, <clears throat> all the cylinders worked out to be 3.1855 when I just honed them. Uh, we are going to let the oil drain, take the torque plate off, uh, and then the block needs to be washed out. So that's what's coming next. And uh, hang in there. I'll be right back with you. Hey guys, this is what I did the uh, the honing in. This is a big piece of I beam that I put some ends on to catch the oil. But this, that's all cast iron grit. I think you can see that. So this is why it's so important after you hone something to get all this grit out of the block. Soap and water and a brush is the only thing that's going to do it. Um, this will absolutely ruin a new engine so it's critical there's a lot of this still left on the cylinders and it's critical that that comes out of the block so I'll try and show you the cross hatch that we got and then we'll uh, we'll get to washing that thing out okay guys there's a shot of the cross hatch you can kind of see, there's still a lot of grit in here. I didn't wash it yet, but you could kind of see the, the cross hatch in there. Um, <clears throat> 250 stone, and you don't want it too smooth, and you don't want it too rough. So 250 with the up and down motion gives you a perfect cross hatch. Get that on all the cylinders. 
they're very dirty so it's kind of hard to see um, we got oil still dripping down on these but um, that is a proper hone job the cylinders are right on size now that I took the torque plate off if you put the bore gauge in there again this the dimensions are all over the place and uh, that's how it's supposed to be so we'll put the pistons in and then and when the head goes on our bores will come will come right to uh, 3 inch uh, 185 and a half and that's what we're shooting for so uh, next step is to wash this out and then get to cutting the seats and give it another washing and then we'll finally get to assembly so hang in there be right back with you okay guys we got the uh, cylinders all washed out and uh, got the bores nice and clean and what I'm gonna do is check our piston ring end gap so we got a piston ring here and we're just gonna kinda roll it into the hole there and then we're gonna take a piston and we're just gonna square it up in there we want that to be nice and square when we take our measurement now on a 60 over bore that end gap should be anywhere between seven thousandths to seventeen thousandths so I'm gonna take a seven thousandths feeler gauge oops hang in there there's two of them I'll take a seven thousandths feeler gauge and you see that fits in there with a little bit of slop and we'll take an eight thousandths and just a little bit of drag on the eight thousandths so uh, you're not going to get your end gap right if your bore is off so um, we know our bore is right on the money here so uh, the, the piston end ring gap worked out just perfect so I'm going to check all the holes and it should fall probably all of them are going to fall around seven eight thousandths but uh, I'll check them all and let you know what happens okay I'm on my last cylinder the number one cylinder and that one also is coming in perfect with an eight thousandths end gap and you could check it at a couple different heights and it should like I say be between seven and uh, <clears throat> 17 thousandths and if it's not you could just uh, you could file the end gap there uh, no big deal but check it and make sure your uh, your ring falls where it should be and if you got your bore and your hone just right it should uh, work out perfect for you so we know that's good and uh, we'll move on to uh, cutting the seats next and I'll show you that in the next video but uh, we're gonna end this one here today and uh, thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next video and we'll do some valve seat cutting